Welcome back to another episode of the Scholar Budget Podcast, where we help students like you to earn a debt-free degree and navigate finances. So friends, I am currently reading the book, Win the Day by Mark Batterson. And there is a part of the book that I wanna share with you because it really um, connects with our guest for today. So it says, it's easy to envy the success of others while ignoring the sacrifices that made it possible. Quit envying their outcomes and start imitating their inputs. Reverse engineer the people you respect. And so I'm sharing this with you because today's guest is just phenomenal. Really one of those people that you can see they're doing great things, but it didn't come easy, like it took work, right? And, and sometimes I feel like we just need to see that there are people doing these things and it's not a far fetch. Like these are people that are within our same neighborhood, our same community, our same grade level. And uh, so yeah, Rachel uh, Lobby is a finance major at Purdue University with interest in investment management and social entrepreneurship. She is passionate about social impact, engaging in anti-trial trafficking advocacy since the age of 12 and founding her own financial literacy organization, Building Financial Freedom at the age of 17. Um, she's an avid scholarship applicant, which is why we're so grateful to have her here. Um, Rachel has won over 60K in scholarships, including the Taco Bell Live Moss Scholarship and the PIMCO Future Leader Scholarship. And this summer, Rachel will be interning at Google in their finance department. So let's jump in and hear what Rachel has to say. And I want to encourage you to take notes because she's giving away a lot of great advice to help you earn a debt-free degree. You're listening to the Scholar Budget Podcast, where we teach you how to earn a debt-free degree, grow your money, and claim every opportunity with your name on it. I'm your host, Raquel Bartoli. Let's jump right in. Hello, Rachel. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, and thank you for this opportunity. Awesome. Awesome. We are always excited to have amazing scholars like yourself join us on this podcast because it's really important for students to see that um, other students have done it and there is a possibility for them to do it as well. And so we're so grateful that you'll be able to share your nuggets and wisdom and hopefully our listeners can take advantage and, and utilize everything that, that you're sharing. So Rachel, please tell us more about who you are and what you're doing. Yeah, so hi everyone. I'm Rachel Lobby and I'm from West Lafayette, Indiana. And I'm actually studying finance at Purdue University, where I'm also a member of the Dr. Cornell A. Bell Business Opportunity Program. And a primary passion of mine is actually social impact. So that's something I'm heavily involved in. For example, I founded Building Financial Freedom, my financial education organization, at 17. I've done anti trafficking advocacy since age 12. And I've also been outspoken about youth advocacy and education on platforms like the National Youth Leadership Council's podcast and the OHCHR youth consultation on the International Day of Education. And in addition to all of these, I've been fortunate enough to win 60K in scholarships, 60K plus actually. Wow, awesome. It sounds like you have a lot going on um, and you have fully invested. You, I mean, you just brushed past that 60K and we're gonna jump into that. Um, but I feel like you were well worth the 60K. So let's let's talk about this. Um, you know, winning over 60K in scholarships is an incredible achievement. And I think when some students hear that, they're like, wow, only Rachel can do that, right? So could you share specific strategies or approaches that you used in the application process that has contributed to your success in the scholarship game? Yeah, so first I'd say that I find a lot of my scholarships through LinkedIn, my university and other sources. And because people know I apply to a lot of scholarships, they always send them to me, so that's really helpful. But I also do a lot of personal research. So every semester I have a sticky note of scholarships I plan to apply to. But how do I choose which ones to apply to? Well, first I consider competition. If a scholarship is given by my university, then I know it's going to be less competitive than a national one. So it would make more sense to apply to that because my chances are better. Additionally, right. I'm a minority studying business. And I also have affiliations with diverse organizations. So I can go find hyper-specific scholarships that fit my identities. And like, for example, if you're first gen or low income, there's even more options. 
And another thing is I personally avoid scholarships that require me to write essays about topics other than myself. And I know some kids only do video scholarships. So like figure out what works for you and figure out your boundaries. Okay. And me with my experiences, I've been applying to things for a long time. I've been applying to fellowships, camps, and scholarships since middle school. Since middle school. And that means I have a decade, a, about a decade of writing experience, but also successes and rejections. So at this point, I know how to succeed, but I've also failed so many times. And so what I've learned is that you need to be a good storyteller and often a good writer to win a scholarship. And the story needs to be interesting or unique. So me, I have a passion for social impact. So I founded my financial literacy organization at 17, anti-trafficking work since 12. So I already stick out. But if yeah. your stories aren't as unique, you need to build your story in a way that can captivate the audience, bring emotions into it, talk about your obstacles and how you overcame them. And don't sound generic. Be concise and don't use 10 words if three suffice. But lastly, use feedback. It wasn't till sophomore year of college where I felt confident enough in my writing to submit it with only self-edits. I would ask my teachers, professors, friends, like former high school teachers, right. anyone to edit my essays to make sure they sounded good. So I'd recommend all of those things. Wow, that's like a mouthful of awesome nuggets. I'm just gonna recap. I love the fact that you said you've been applying to various programs, camps since middle school. And so I, I'm kind of just tailoring this message to the parents that are listening right now that it's never too late to start positioning our scholars to get ready for even bigger opportunities. So that built your muscle for writing. It built your muscle for storytelling. And then I got to make a U-turn to this next thing because you've you've founded something based on your passion and now you're able to utilize that within your scholarship stories to say, you know, this is why I'm worthy of receiving $50,000, $2,000. And so I want to encourage our scholars as you're listening to Rachel, um, you still have an opportunity to create that story. If you're thinking, oh, my story is boring, whatever the case is, which is not true. If you know, do enough fact finding, you can find some great things within your own life. But if you're a, a freshman right now, or even a senior in high school, you still have an opportunity to create that story, which is amazing. So it's so cool to hear that your story and your experience from all the way back to middle school has led you to where you are now. So thank you for sharing that, Rachel. I love it. And so, you know, Rachel, many students aspire to secure, secure scholarships for their college education. You know, the goal is to earn a debt-free degree. So mm -hmm. can you highlight any like standout moments or experiences that believe that you believe uh, made your scholarship application like stand out the most? Like if you, it could be that one, one thing that really puts you at the top chart, what would that be? Yeah, I would definitely say my background in anti-trafficking and financial literacy. So right. on the anti-trafficking side, I volunteered for global anti-trafficking organizations like Mission Jade. And I've been interested in the issue since I was 12. And so on the financial literacy side, not many students have founded an organization dedicated to financial literacy either. And if you add on my financial education policy experience, you have an even more compelling story. So being interested in weirdly specific things like financial literacy and anti-trafficking has made me stand out. But I think the bigger thing is taking action in those fields. And that also shows I'm a socially focused person. And people like giving money to kids and young people who are doing things to better the world. Another thing I right. use to stand out is my experiences in business. So from starting my own business to having multiple internships, fellowships, and professional engagement opportunities with top firms, that's another thing that makes me stick out. So I'd say my dedication to my field of study, both in and out of the classroom, really also complements my social impact work. Nice. So what I'm hearing um, is like, number one, niche down as much as you can, like find that thing that you're passionate about, because sometimes mm -hmm. students um, look at service and community service as, you know, let me attach myself to a whole bunch of projects and just collect these hours when they could really like hone in on an area that they're really passionate about, whether it's social justice, uh, you know, teen pregnancy, something in their community, and then build their project around that. And that really would help them to stand out. Do you agree with that, Rachel? I would agree because not every kid has a passion for social impact, but I often find that by putting yourself out there and serving others, you can find a niche interest. So me, for example, I think my first volunteering experience was in eighth grade when I started volunteering at a nursing home and I didn't want to. And I thought... <laughs> it would be boring, but right. I actually enjoyed it. So it kind of made me realize that I need to incorporate all ages into all of my service activities. And so I brought Wonderful. about like a new perspective. So I think students should definitely 
engage in more community service and try and yeah. explore what parts of, I guess, social impact they might be interested in. Cause that makes for a compelling scholarship application and also makes you a better person. Awesome. I love that. And so would you say that the scholarship process was a daunting process for you? Did you have like times that you just wanted to give up on applying? Yeah. So when I was in middle school is when I realized I liked writing. Like I've always kind of had a knack for writing, but I've been applying to stuff since middle, middle school. And it didn't really matter to me if I got rejected because I liked writing and I was ambitious. And right. the funny thing was I actually didn't plan on applying to more scholarships after getting into college. So Purdue, my university was basically paying me to be there. So I was like, okay, I'm content. I don't need to apply for more. But then my dad was like, you know, you should still apply for scholarships. Right. And I'm actually glad he said that. Otherwise I wouldn't <laughs> have a lot of the opportunities I've had because of those applications. Shout so, out to dad. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. And so, okay, let's talk about some of the scholarships that you have one, because these are like really big scholarships, popular scholarships, and I can see why they've chosen you. You um, are a dedicated student. You've put in the work consistently, and now you're reaping the results and the benefits of your hard work. So like, um, I know that you received the Taco Bell Live Moss scholarship. Um, and so what motivated you to apply for this scholarship, especially like with the bigger ones? Because sometimes students look at the, the more national scholarships and they're like, uh, you know, there's too much competition. They're not going to choose me. So what what made you want to like apply for those bigger opportunities? Yeah. So for PIMCO, their scholarship was 20,000 at the time. Now it's 30,000. And wow. someone actually sent it in one of my group chats and I applied because I'm a minority student in business and it's a scholarship for minority students in business. So I was like, okay, yeah. this is fitting. And so PIMCO is an investment management company. And I actually have interest in the field of investment management. Like on my resume, I had different experiences with other investment management firms. So I think actually being interested in the field of work that they did, that really came across my essay and my resume mm -hmm. also reflected that. And so I first applied, I think two years ago. And at the time it was open for all classes. So you could be a junior, sophomore, freshman, and I moved past the resume stage into the part where they showed a question and you have to answer it with like a video interview, but you only had one attempt. And I just remember not being ready for some of the questions and I got rejected, but I decided to try again last year. And at the time they made it sophomore only. So that was like my last chance to win. And I created a whole document to prepare for the interview full of answers to common interview questions, information on PIMCO as a company, and I finally got to the final interview with live interviewers. And wow. so I mainly talked about my interest in the firm, but they were really interested in my passion for social impact and the intersection of my firm, of their firm and my goals. So the social impact really captivated my interviewers, I felt. And I think that helped me win ultimately, like, cause that's again, really specific anti-trafficking and financial literacy. Right. And I guess on the Taco Bell side, it was pretty similar too. Like the first year I applied two years ago, I heard about it, applied, got rejected but I tried again last year and they're all about creativity. Like you have to tell your passion in a video, but obviously you don't want to be boring with the video. My first video was right. me just like sitting and talking, but that was bad. So then last year I tried harder. I made another video, but I realized that was bad too. So then I scrapped it and remade another one. And I just talked about my financial education experience throughout the video. And so I talked about my advocacy because when I was younger, I advocated for a mandatory personal finance class in high school. And I talked about founding my financial education organization. And I was creative with my audio, video format, editing. I made a whole script. I thought about what nice. would go where, how could I could make it better, and tried to tell a compelling story. And I did win. And the great thing about Taco Bell is you can apply one year. And if you get it, you can also get renewal scholarships. So you keep applying. And then they like to give the same amount or higher. So like... I won the highest amount, 25K. So right. if I get it three more times, that's 100K in total. Just nice. for making a two minute video once a year. Like that's crazy. But it is. I think something that's helped me is just really whenever I tailor my applications, I'm always going to mention my social impact work because that's important to me and that's central to who I am. And something I also do is look at my scholarship sponsors' values and tie my experiences to those values. And right. that usually works out well for me. I don't just do that for scholarships. I do that for internships as well, different interviews, just tying it back so we can see that we're common in some way. Yeah, I love your determination. I love how you're like, listen, I applied for it the year before they rejected me and I came back to that joker and I was like, yeah. listen, we gonna do this again. So that shows like your grit, your determination. I think you're just a 
awesome fireball of just like fire, like you're on fire for your mission, for your cause. And, and I can definitely see this through this interview. So it, it makes, it's like a no brainer. Like you were that student and, and I'm just, you know, going back to like, you started this work early, you found your, your passion early, your niche early, you tried things. I, I'm pretty sure you took some risk on some things going back to um, when you mentioned about, you know, having to do the community service at the nursing home. Initially, you know, most students are going to be like, I don't want to do that. That's boring. But I think it's important for us to try new things because you just never know what it's going to lead to. Right. Exactly. Awesome. And so, Rachel, would you say that when you graduate from college, you are going to have a hundred percent debt free degree? Yeah, definitely. Because my initial offer from Purdue was already generous. So I'm, I don't think I've paid anything any semester while being here. Because I'm also an in-state student, so it makes it easier. Yeah. But I haven't paid anything. Most wow. semesters I've gotten refunds. And they actually sometimes reduce my award letter each semester because my refund would be too big if they didn't. So <laughs> I'm not paying anything. Except for like exactly. textbooks and stuff, which I'm sure I could get some of my scholarships to pay for them if I wanted to. Awesome. Wow. What a blessing. And so even like to this day, like right now, are you still applying for scholarships? Yes, I actually plan on applying to one. It's due next week. Yeah, because I wow. actually want a scholarship from them and they have another scholarship. So I asked, you know, can I apply for this? And they were like, sure. And then another one in March. Wow. But it's just harder for me to find scholarships right now. But I also applied to Taco Bell again this year, like for okay. my annual scholarship. So hopefully that works out. But I'm trying to find more scholarships to apply to. I'm just not running yeah. into them in a better way, if that makes sense, for this year. Okay. Makes sense. Awesome. And so, Rachel, being a, a first-generation college student often comes with unique challenges. Um, and you, are you a first-gen student? So I'm actually not first-gen. Okay. Well, that is awesome. Um, even if you're first gen or not, there's still challenges that come with, you know, going to college, applying for applicate um, scholarships, et cetera. So for those students who are like lacking support, lacking confidence, lacking motivation, whatever it may be, like what can you share with them, especially for those students who don't have the support or someone else that has gone through this process to kind of guide them and help them? Yeah, so I would say for all my first-gen students or students who don't have much support, know that every challenge is an opportunity. So, for example, with being first-gen, I know there's a lot of obstacles, but I've actually run into so many scholarships just for first-gen students. Like me, I focus on merit scholarships, but I know there's a lot of need-based ones. And right. even outside of scholarships, there's so many fellowships and opportunities assigned specifically for first-gen students and other students who may struggle, low-income students. So just find those opportunities. There's so many out there because... Sometimes I even struggle to find stuff, but then I realize there are so many resources out there for minority students. So right. there's going to be even more for students who, I guess, have more barriers to overcome. So don't let that hinder you. All right. You just got to keep looking because we know that the opportunities are out there. So you got to look for it, put in the work. And, um, you know, sometimes when I speak with parents, they're like, oh, when should my students start looking for scholarships? And I said, it's, you know, it's not just about looking for scholarships. It's about preparing yeah. yourself to be a good fit exactly. for that scholarship. So um, awesome. And, you know, for students who may not have extensive extracurricular activities, what advice do you have on showcasing their strengths and achievements effectively in a scholarship application? So. We're talking about maybe that senior in high school right now, you know what I mean? That didn't do yeah. as much as they could have done and they're really struggling to like pull out that story. What advice can you give to them? Yeah, so I think it's important to note that extracurriculars don't have to be extensive and they don't even have to be prestigious or impressive. You just need to be able to tell a story with what you have. And so if you wanna highlight yourself in your scholarship essay, maybe tell stories about how you've acted in certain situations, your contributions to specific settings, and talk about how you've grown into a better person. So really storytelling is key. And you can get that from any space, whether you volunteered a couple of times, whether you serve at your church, in the classroom, outside of it. And right. also, if you have a passion, show the passion for your interests. And talk about key points in your life that showed an interest in that passion as well, showed you acting on that. And talk about how different moments in your life led to who you are today. So you don't have to have a huge list of really interesting things. You just have to be yourself and 
show growth or some story in some way. Yeah. And I've spoken to quite a few scholarship organizations and they are always honing in on authenticity, you know, being true to who you are. And like you mentioned earlier, being a good storyteller, taking your story and really bringing it, you know, to the judge or the reader so they can be a part of your story. So thank you for emphasizing that. And so let me ask you, Rachel, um, have your like peers and friends reached out to you like, Rachel, can you help me with scholarships? Like when they see you doing all these great things. Do you have a lot of friends and people coming to you asking you for help? Yeah, just last week, someone asked me to help them edit their scholarship like essay. And so I did. And last year, there's an organization called Alpha, which is like, I think it's a Latino like business organization. And so I helped someone with their scholarship application for that. And they ended up winning. And so people are always asking me, even now, like someone's preparing for the PIMCO scholarship. They asked me for help since I won. Yeah. People on LinkedIn have connected with me just to ask questions about it. So yeah, different people approach me. Awesome. And so let me ask you, um, with having all of these um, scholarship funds, et cetera, how has it helped you on your, your college journey? Yeah. So in terms of how they've helped me, I'd say they benefited me in a mostly positive way. The only negative really is that one time I won a scholarship from my university's mortar board and they took it away because I had too much money. And they reduced my annual scholarships because of all my external awards, but really the benefits are big. So like even besides the press and money I've gotten, I've been able to travel. So PIMCO, for example, nice. they flew me out to Newport and I met the director of their foundation. And wow. then Taco Bell flew me out to California, like the San Jose area, where I had probably the best days of 2023. And nice. it was great because the Taco Bell scholarship, it's all about making a video about your passion. So everyone there was passionate. So I was inspired right. by everyone I met. I met people who won shops, had Disney Plus shows. Someone was on the Steve Harvey show, Access New York. There was a Truman Scholar there. Just wow. so many impressive people. And I'm still connected with that amazing community. And they also gave me a mentor as part of the Taco Bell like, scholar community. And my nice. mentor is actually the former head of the PIMCO Foundation. So it's just Look funny how <laughs> I want to be from PIMCO. And then now my mentor has that tie. So... Scholarships have really opened up so many doors for me for mentorship, community, and an easier academic experience. Like, I don't have to worry about paying for things. Like, I don't have to have a job because applying right. to scholarships, that is my job. And that's, for me at least, that's way more efficient than working a regular job. And I definitely think people should apply to scholarships more consistently, not just when you need them, but starting early or making it kind of a habit if you have time. I think a lot of people are missing out. Yeah. I feel the same way, Rachel. I love how you said that it is your job, like especially for those students who don't work, right? You don't have a part-time job or anything like that. Make this your job, make this your full-time gig before you get to college so that you can secure as much money as possible to help you on your journey. And um, Rachel, so what's, what's in the future for you with all of this goodness happening right now in your life, in this journey, where do you see yourself with going forward with like your degree and all of the, the great things that you're, you're doing? Yeah. So in terms of the more immediate future, I kind of realized that I'm a junior, right? So I have very limited time to apply for more scholarships. So that's kind of my goal to make as much money as I can through scholarships. And then after I graduate, I actually want to do the Fulbright. So I'd be teaching English in a country in Latin America for nine months. I'm thinking nice. about maybe Paraguay because I did a virtual study abroad program in Paraguay, but I'm still deciding. Um, I love the Spanish language. I like teaching. I like working with kids and I don't want to go straight into the workforce. So right. that's something I want to do. And I'm also interning at Google this summer. So if I like it, then I might work for Google after the Fulbright or I might go into investment management because I have huge interest in that field maybe PIMCO or DE Shaw. And later on in the future, I plan to get an MBA MPP, hopefully from the University of Chicago. MPP because I have an interest in policy, MBA because I have an interest in business. And okay. Yeah, they both just kind of go together, especially with my financial education work, and my business activities. And then later on in the future, I want to become a board member for an anti-trafficking organization. And I actually had an idea in one of my classes focused on entrepreneurship. I care a lot about social impact and business, and I finally found a way to like mesh both of those. So I thought mm. about maybe launching a venture capital firm aimed at investing in social enterprises focused on the UN's sustainable development goals. So for example, investing in a financial education app, doing things like that. So 
right. I think that'd be great working with different impact investors to fund things that focus on societal return, but you can also make like a financial return. So that's a goal I have for the later future. But those are some of the key steps that I'm taking along the way. I love it. You have tons of, of opportunities and I'm inspired by you. Like I'm just, you know, inspired by your greatness and all that you're doing. So you. I want to encourage you to continue to crush it. I know that you're going to, um, you're going to create a really big space of impact. I feel like your work is going to be legendary and it all started with what you did like in middle school and you're, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure your parents pouring into you, but you're proof, Rachel, that when we put forth the hard work, when we, when we continue to persevere and push through even the rejections, right? Um, great things happen. So Rachel, are there any other last nuggets, any advice that you can leave with our listeners, whether it's about the college application process, scholarships, or just the mindset work that goes into this whole thing? Because a lot of students don't apply simply because they can't get over the mindset stuff. Any Anything you wanna close us out with? Yeah, I'd say three things. Tell your story, just do it, and every challenge is an opportunity. Telling your story is the most important thing in writing. That really makes you relate to the audience. The audience can relate to you. And just apply, even if you don't feel like you'll get it, because then that's still practice for the future. And every right. challenge is an opportunity. If you get that rejection, try again. Like, if I hadn't reapplied for Taco Bell, I'd be 25K poorer. If I hadn't right. reapplied to PIMCO, I'd be 20K poorer. Like if right. I hadn't reapplied to so many things, like there's still things today that I keep getting rejected for each year when I apply, but I still try because I really want the opportunity. So I leave the audience with those two things. I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rachel. Again, we know you're a busy scholar out there doing great things. So keep crushing it. And we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Hey there. I hope you were taking notes and you're ready to implement what you heard. If this podcast inspired you or helped you in any way, I would love for you to subscribe, follow, and share this with a student, parent, or educator you care about because sharing is caring. Also, your feedback means a lot. So please leave a written review of this show on Apple Podcasts. And if you ever want to connect outside of the podcast, you can find us at The Scholar Budget on Insta or The Book of Faces. So until next time, shine bright and put in the work so we can make those dreams a reality. Bye!